not all of the people that are coming here are on welfare or on disability. Um, I find that some people don't realize that there is hunger and homelessness out there. Um, they feel that only the homeless, the ones that hang out on the street corner, are the ones that they're helping. They don't realize that there's too much month at the end of the money for a lot of people. And um, those are the ones that go in and use the food bank. And they're the ones that really need the help as well. We have single moms, and, and more and more what we're seeing is single dads coming into the food bank, that they have the custody of the children, and so they're now struggling to make ends meet. Well, you know, I recall as a child, um, my father leaving my mother with three hungry children to feed, and no, um, no money no food and no career, so to speak. And back then there was no such thing as a food bank. And even if there was, I don't think my mother would have accepted handouts. I, I came literally to bury with nothing and I had to start over from scratch and I literally only had like the clothes on my back and uh, carrying my child, my, my youngest boy and then I was pregnant with my daughter at the time actually. So I came back with nothing. So to, to start from that and just doing everything that you possibly can just to fight for survival, um, you know, it's not anything I had ever come from before. We have we have families that come here who were both working, who are now both laid off, and they still have a mortgage, and they have three kids and a dog and a cat at home, and never expected to be coming to the food bank. A car accident and if anyone's been in that situation when you're in the hole between the insurance company and your company paying you insurance company paying your wages you are it, it's it's devastating and I lived by myself it was just me and my dog and I went hungry I didn't have money for food ever and my friends would come over and they'd check my fridge and they'd be like why isn't there any food in your fridge and I'd say well I haven't gone grocery shopping today because I was too embarrassed to say anything and ask for help. We uh, do deal with seniors a lot because I have the senior show. I am a senior. I interview seniors all the time and I'm, I'm around groups that deal with seniors and even if the group's mandate is not particularly to deal with seniors, it's to deal with people in the community, seniors show up. So whether it's a David Busby Center or Out of the Cold or Senior Wish, which is my charity that I founded, uh, we did a Christmas Wish project. And we found that there were people out there that needed food as much as they needed a Christmas gift. And they just needed some, somebody to care about them. You know, I had a lady yesterday, she worked uh, a full-time, part-time job who and her and four others got laid off from, from this particular restaurant and they were replaced by students at a lower, at a lower rate. So, and her husband happens to be ill and isn't working, so she now has no income. So you, you, every scenario is different, but what it all comes down to is that these people need help. And our job at the food bank is to provide them with that assistance. Hi, it's Bob uh, from Alpstar Technical Solutions. I'm here today interviewing Vanessa Dewsbury. Dewsbury, yeah. Dewsbury right, who came to support the 12 ladies here in Barrie. Yes, actually, I'm here because Bob is here to support 12 ladies. But you know what? You'll have a great weekend. Ladies!
ladies and gentlemen, welcome our 12 ladies. You know, living in a tent together for uh, an extended period of time, I'll tell you, you're brave because you're all friends now. What goes on in the tent stays. But four days from now, I'm just hoping nobody's having like a survivor moment, you know, where they're going up to the camera quietly saying, I can't stand Rose. And I just want to also congratulate you because in a, a world that is full of fundraising events, I mean, one of the biggest challenges for those out there who raise money and awareness for great causes is standing out because there are so many events, especially in a community as community minded as Barry is. You've done something completely unique. Nobody's done it before. I'm sure others will do it again in the future. But congratulations, particularly to Chris, to bringing, for bringing this idea to Barry. And I wish you absolutely. I wish you all the success in the world. You've filled four days with an exciting agenda, and I know you're going to be successful, and you already have. So congratulations on behalf of the community. Well, 12 Ladies in a Tent actually started in Niagara Falls. Uh, a close friend of mine that we boat with, uh, Tracy McCabe, is a, a Niagara Regional Police Officer. And she was one of the 12 ladies last year in the tent. So we had gone out to see her in her event last uh, June and thought it was a fantastic event. And I left there with goosebumps thinking I have to bring this to Barry. It's just pretty cool. A uh, great way to help the food bank out and, you know, kind of, I was looking for something to link up with with my business and you know thought I'm in the business for helping people and you know helping them get on track with their finances and stuff so this kind of made sense it's it's all about helping people so the food bank was a no-brainer for me so I got back and I called Peter Sunborg the very uh, first day that he was on the job which was kind of cool in itself and uh, I think I kind of took him back a bit because I was a little more exuberant I think than <laughs> He didn't know me from Adams. My first reaction when Chris called me was uh, to put her off for two weeks. <laughs> and the reason I put her off for two weeks was because it was the very first phone call that I'd ever received as the new director of the food bank. So on June 7th, I think it was, she calls me up. At 9.30 in the morning, she says, my name is Chris Houston, and I was just in Niagara Falls visiting my girlfriend, who uh, was one of the 12 ladies in the tent. Have you ever heard of 12 ladies in the tent? And I said, absolutely. It's a great event, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I said, I think it would be super to do that in Barrie. Oh, great. Well, I want to move it to Barrie, and I want to talk to you about it. And I said, well, why don't we try and get together in the next couple of weeks? I'll look at my calendar, and I set up a time to meet with Chris. What she didn't know at the time was that that was my first morning. I'd been in, actually in the food bank for half an hour. I didn't even know where my calendar was. <laughs> and uh, so she didn't know any of that. And so when I called her back two weeks later and I shared that, she said, well, you sounded like you'd been there forever. We did. We had uh, a great first meeting and he said if you're interested in doing like organizing it then go for it. So my first phone call actually when I walked out the door was Rose Ramita. I had already made contact with her in the past with um, some of her food um, drives that she does with the uh, um, less fortunate and uh, she immediately said yes. My reaction when Chris first called me was um, Sure. First of all, it was like, you know, do you want to be one of the 12 ladies in the tent? I come across this and I went, sure, count me in. And uh, she said, okay, well, you're the first person I called. So let's see if we can find a few other and we'll let you know when it goes from there. So it was great when she called me back and some of the people that were involved, I knew some of them already. So it was great. I thought this was going to be exciting. Time. I know when Chris gave me a call, she said, I can't think of anybody else that I would love to have there because I know how active you are in the community. And uh, she actually contacted me way back in October, which is a really, really good time. I, I had at the time that Chris came to me and talked to me about it, she, um, she had said, oh, you've got a huge women's network. You know, there's so much potential for you to come and bring 
all these people, you know, into the event and help us. So I was, I was kind of worried at first because of my two young kids and five days away from home. But I, um, I really kind of got in thinking about how many people the food bank affects in Barrie alone. I was just like, okay. It's, it's a no-brainer. I've got to do this. I've got to do it. Chris spoke to me um, shortly after she had been to the event in Niagara area last year and asked me if I'd be willing to be involved in some way. And uh, I said, for sure. Welcome to day two of uh, 12 Ladies in a Tent. We had a little bit of a, a uh, interruption by Mother Nature last night, 2 o'clock in the morning. started to rain. Found out there was... Uh, a few holes in the top of the tent, so we ended up having to rearrange a few things about 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, so we were up bright, bright and early this morning, 7.15 a.m. We had our first donation come by, a woman named Sarah with her dog Buddy, and uh, brought us our first food donation of the day. Morning! Morning, Welcome to Family Day at 12 Ladies in a Tent. Please come down. The person that probably inspired me the most was certainly Chris Houston. Chris was a real inspiration for somebody who took this on. She's a person that's trying to run her own business and was doing this for every moment, hour, day that she's spending on the 12 Ladies in a Tent event. She's taking away from her, her business, her family, her own time, and she did it very selflessly. And um, you know, for her to be just as driven to move forward, her goals were very high and um, she continues to set the bar high, not only for herself, but for everybody that's involved. Chris, um, taking this project on, I've seen a lot of people take projects on, but I've never seen that kind of um, endurance and, and, and clear thoughtness of how it was going to go and how she never wavered or never changed from, always took every decision and made it. I was really quite impressed with that as a leader. She was the right person. She did her job, she did it well. Uh, inspired me the most during the event because Chris and Steph, I already know and they already inspire me, uh, was Deb because she was an absolute trooper through the whole event. She was always smiling, she was in, always in good spirits, no matter the heat, no matter the problems, no matter the trouble, she was always positive and uh, she had her magical tickle trunk. I thought she was like, wow, she's really high maintenance. Look how much she brought with her. And I'm looking at it and she'd just be like, does anyone have a tarp? I do. Pulls it out of the trunk. Anyone have any rope? I do. Pulls it out of the trunk. Does anyone have these big fancy hats that she had for Diva Day? And, and I don't know what didn't have a trunk. Actually with Rob Ward, who was our sound technician, um, he came on late, and I didn't realize the, the history of it, but you know, we had someone who bowed out and everything else. I asked Rob, and before I even half explained it, he says, I'm in. And he was just totally in, totally sold out. And he was there first thing in the morning, setting up sound for our Zumba stuff. And he would say, okay, when do I need to come back? And he'd come back for the auction stuff or whatever, and Barb was doing her thing. And, and then in the evening, he was there till late at night, sometimes even in the rain with his equipment with the bands and he was absolutely amazing. There were, I mean, there were so many things. There were people that, um, Rebecca, when she was sick, she just wanted to carry on, you know, and Deborah with her poison ivy and her purse swollen feet. I mean, I just was glad it wasn't me. I don't know what I would have done. It was, it was just the whole weekend, but people were trying to help her and, and saying, I'll take you somewhere and we'll do whatever we need to do. Peter from the food bank, uh, an amazing person, being the 13th honorary woman. I now go to the food bank at least once a week and you know see what's happening. At, you know, there's always information or something that's going on. What an amazing person 
what the transformation he has had at that food bank since he's been there is just unbelievable. And um, I think he's doing an amazing job. And you know, it's not, again, it's not just a handout. He'll listen to what you have to say and guide you in that way as well. I think the inspiration for me was that these ladies gave up everything for five days. They gave up their career, they gave up their families, they gave up their husband, they gave up their warm, comfortable bed in a roof that didn't leak. Um, they gave up everything. And so the inspiration for me came out of those 12 ladies making that kind of a sacrifice for the Bay Food Bank. And, and so that became my inspiration. Why would, you know, those ladies gave up the whole thing. But they had also given a year's worth of work to get to the to get to, to the point where they could have the privilege to give up their their life. I was telling my daughter and son um, about the event. They're three and five, and I um, we happened to be driving at the time, and I was telling my daughter about how you know we're helping all the people in Barrie who maybe don't. Um, have enough food to eat and she she you know she's five so she doesn't get it and so she's saying well why don't they have any food you know and I said well sometimes people lose their jobs and you know they just need a little bit of help till they get back on their feet and um, we happened to come up on the um, off-ramp of the highway at um, Bayfield and the 400 and there's always someone there um, standing there asking for change and so um, my daughter looked over and she said mommy does he have food and I said you know what, sweetie, he probably doesn't. I'm going to get all teared up. But she said, well, let's give him my snacks. <laughs> and so I said, oh, my God. You know, so sure enough, I rolled my window down and I said, hey, buddy, do you want some food? And he ran over and he's like, thank you so much, you know. So, sorry. <laughs> but this is why I did it. Because of people who you know, just need that little bit of extra help. And maybe this guy could have got a job that day because he had something in his stomach and he could think. <laughs> Sorry. This family, a uh, young family, young couple, they've got two young boys, Ollie and Jude. And Ollie's in kindergarten, Jude is, I, I guess, probably about three years old. And uh, in they come and they're all excited and over they come right to the table. I just sat down and the father says, are you one of the 12 ladies in a tent? And I'm like, yes, yes, I'm one of the 12 ladies in a tent. And he, he goes, oh, we saw your, your banner on the back of the truck. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And he goes, can my son tell you a story? And I'm like, oh, perfect, I love stories. <laughs> and so Ollie uh, just right away uh, launched in, into his story. Um, he's at one of the schools that did uh, a food drive campaign for the 12 ladies in a tent and his class won the pizza contest, meaning that they brought the most food, brought the most food to the table. Um, and he went on to tell me about how he went to the grocery store with his mom and they filled up the whole thing. The whole thing, he says. And he says, just the whole thing. And his mom pipes in and says, the grocery cart. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, that's a lot of food to have uh, contributed, which is really cool. And uh, he, you know, he went on to tell me more, more about um, what had excited him about that in his class and asked me some questions about you know, why I got involved. And uh, so I said, you know, it's just a great way to give back to the community. And his parents ended up thanking me and thanking the 12 ladies really for the work that we had done. And the fact that um, they were able to, uh, through that, teach their children philanthropy. And to me, that is one of the biggest legacies out of this. Okay. You know what, just sit back, relax. <laughs> do we always need to test it and do we always need to try it? We're in the midst of the Diva Day Core Challenge right now. We've had uh, probably about 10 people come through, but we've had, I would guess, about $100 donated already. People pay by donation to go through and put a ticket into uh, the bed that they think is the best, and at the end we'll be announcing a winner. Nothing that is new under the sun, under the sun.
things that are being done here, all the proceeds are going to the Berry Food Bank. Nothing that is new under the sun. Okay, someone out there help her. Nothing that is new. Okay, $100 donation to go in and vote on the Diva Day Core Challenge. Thank you so much. Forget what's on the move, just like these ladies. Don't forget what's in the air. All you boys don't know how to groove, and all the girls don't even care. Don't forget what's on the move. Don't forget what's in the air. Five days, five days rugging it on beds. <laughs> and catering. You should be fishing for your stuff out there. No, so uh, actually two significant donations today. Today is that now we're into Monday. Regardless of how much food or funds we raised in the end, the 12 Ladies event was very successful because we created such an awareness in the community. Uh, just getting the word out there, letting people know where we were, and creating an environment where people could come and share and help others, that was what was important. Not how much was raised, but how much awareness was raised of the actual facts and what the food bank does for people. Absolutely. Um, because you can never underestimate awareness. I think that um, when you start looking at numbers and you say, well, our goal is this and we did this, I wouldn't say that's, don't measure success that way. Well, I think beyond the awareness, which we could have done by just having a regular old food drive. We didn't have to be a 12 ladies in the tent event. Um, so I think that beyond all of that, there was all of the activities that brought people to the 12 ladies in a tent. So it wasn't 12 ladies in yellow shirts out in neighborhoods collecting food. It was people coming to us and an opportunity to educate people and for people to see the cubit filling up with food, for people to see the events that were being held. And you know, all we wanted was people to give something back to the food bank. Fortunately for us, the 12 ladies really impacted what people were donating to the food bank. And another little spin-off from the 12 Ladies is that we now have other organizations doing little food drives for us. Uh, we have Volkswagen Audi doing a family fun day and a food drive. We have, uh, uh, we had a, a career college do a garage sale on the weekend that where the, all the proceeds were coming to the food bank. And these, are ki these kind of spin-off little events are happening because the 12 ladies had created such an awareness. I, you know, my goal and my mission with this 12 ladies in a tent is really to get more cities on board that have food banks in their cities to be able to do the event like ours all at the same time. I think it would be an experience to be able to have every city in Ontario that has a food bank doing 12 ladies in a tent at the same time.